name is Sally Copley, and today is Tuesday, August the 9th, 2011. We are in the Heritage Museum, and we're interviewing Toby Powell. The video is sponsored by the Heritage Museum of Montgomery County. Good afternoon, Toby. How are you? Thank you, Sally. I'm fine. Good. Were you born in Montgomery County? If so, could you tell us a little bit about your childhood? Okay, I, I was born in, in Conroe, in Montgomery County, in July 1941. And uh, I just uh, lived, I was born in, in the Mary Swain Sanitarium, which was owned and operated by my grandmother and great aunt. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was the first hospital in Montgomery County. And uh, so it, it's a, it's a was a unique situation. What uh, made it so unique? Well, to have been born in, uh, in your, your grandmother and your great aunt delivered you, number one, and number two is that uh, it was uh, a, the family hospital that uh, served the county, mm -hmm. and uh, the, my ancestors came to Conroe in the early 1900s, right after the turn of the century. Mm -hmm. And uh, my grandmother and great aunt had to gone to nursing college in Alabama. And when they moved to Conroe, it was uh, a time that uh, they realized a need for uh, medical services and hospitals. So they, uh, at that point, opened up a hospital. Very good. Um, you talked a little bit about your family um, where did you live in the county, and what were the conditions of the county and the city? Um, you were born in the Mary Swain Sanatorium, and then where did you go in the county? Where did you live? Well, actually, I lived on the same block as the hospital zone. Uh, I, the hospital was on uh, East Davis Street between uh, North, uh, North Third Street and North Fourth Street, and I lived on North Fourth Street, right on the right on the same block. Uh, and then, uh, up until I uh, graduated from high school and and finally got went to college and got married, and then uh, I moved off to Houston for about a year and came back to Conroe, where I belonged. Good, good. We're glad you did that. Good, good. We're glad you did that. Um, tell us about the memories of. Uh, school, uh, the schools that you attended in your youth? Well, to start out with, I, I, I attended uh, Sam Houston Elementary School. And, and what was so neat about our class is that most of the kids that we went to, started kindergarten with, mm -hmm. we ended up graduating together as well, 12 years or 13 years later. And uh, so uh, we've been close like uh, brothers and sisters more like uh, than classmates were. Mm -hmm. And so we still keep in touch daily now that we have uh, the computers and we That's have, uh, yeah, and, and, and we, we do. We, uh, uh, we also have a, a, a monthly luncheon every month. So we, we are very close-knit uh, class. Great. Tell me a little bit about your family's occupation did your mother work? What did your dad do? Um, well, um, well, my mother, uh, my, by the way, my mother was the first drum major at Conroe High School. So uh, then she married uh, my dad, Lewis Powell, and uh, daddy was a, uh, worked for Spear Oil Company in his adult life up until he retired. And, uh, and then uh, my mother uh, ran and oper owned and operated the uh, uh, Mildred's Cafe out on South Fraser Street, which was uh, originally Sue's Cafe. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, later, I became a, a home builder, and, and I started building in uh, the late, uh, middle 60s, I guess it was, and uh, uh, I built shopping centers and uh, houses and, sh and uh, subdivisions, office buildings, uh, just of all natures uh, of buildings. So, uh, you know, it was uh, giving me a good life here and I'm, I'm still doing it today. Good. Good. Now, you mentioned your parents. 
Were they born and raised here in Montgomery County? Yeah, my father was born here in, in Conroe, and uh, my mother was born in Navasota. So that's just one county away. And uh, uh, Dad uh, was, uh, in his youth, was one of the first uh, ones to have a, an automobile back in those days. And uh, so whenever the necessary time came for medicines or any other things for the hospital, he would have to run off to Houston on that uh, on a real narrow road and, and pick up medicines and come back. And the saying is that he used to burn a car up about every six months because he would just, you know, drive it so hard. So. Did you mention that your dad flew an airplane? Tell us a little bit about that, his history. Well, uh, yeah, he had uh, two biplanes in his life that I knew of, and then uh, uh, he, uh, of course, back in that day, they didn't have an airport, so they just landed in any field that you could find <laughs> close enough and level enough to uh, put the plane down. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, of course, crashed both of them, and, uh, but he was in the landing mode, so it didn't kill him or didn't hurt him. And uh, so uh, I, they'd say that uh, he used to buzz the uh, old uh, high school when he was courting my mother. And uh, that didn't set right with Sheriff Guy Hooper. Uh -huh. So he sort of chased him down every once in a while to catch up with him to try to keep him from doing that anymore. Did they arrest him? I guess not. Next. I don't think they really no. arrested too many people back in those not days. Then, not no. for that. No. You, know, we you know, we talked about uh, the sanatorium. What other medical facilities were in Montgomery County during your childhood? Well, uh, in 1941, the original, first original uh, hospital, Montgomery County Hospital, opened up on South First Street. Mm -hmm. And uh, and my mother, uh, grandmother and great aunt kept theirs open until 1943, and then they closed theirs down. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then that, they were the, but it, it's really uh, a, a I really am happy to know that my family had a start of the hospital district or the medical profession in, Con in Montgomery County. So. That's amazing. That is something to be proud of. Well, what about the roads and the highways? Were they gravel roads or how, how did you get around? What kind of roads did you have? Well, Conroe back when I was young and growing up, uh, it was about 5,000 people or less. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the road, uh, the last blacktop road to the east on, was 4th Street where we lived. And uh, until you got down to 10th Street, which was then uh, 1484, the airport road, mm -hmm. and that was a blacktop road, but everything else between there were gravel roads then. But the roads as a whole, in the whole county and uh, were very narrow, mm -hmm. uh, didn't have shoulders that we have today. And uh, if you needed to pull off, you either pulled off in a ditch or you pulled off in a, if you're lucky enough, you pull off in a flat place. But, uh, My goodness. Yeah. But, uh, My goodness. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about the politics back then, uh, then and now, maybe as a comparison. Well, first of all, there, we've had a lot of great people serve not only the county but in the city. Uh, it takes a special dedication first to serve, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and we've had uh, some good uh, commissioners, we've had good uh, judges, uh, we've had uh, good mayors, uh, good council members. Uh, there's several uh, people that I could just name off, but I'd, I'd leave someone out and then I'd embarrass somebody's family. But Well, and let's say at this point that you are one of our city council people, so. Yes, yeah. I, I am Mayor Pro Tem right now in, in the city of Conroe, yeah. and, uh, but I also served in the city council and on the planning commission during the 1970s. I did not know that. And, uh, so uh, after 30 something years, I, uh, I decided to come back and, uh, and run again and mm -hmm. was elected again. And, and it's been a pleasure and an honor to serve the city of Conroe. 
We're very lucky to have you. Um, tell us about any disasters that have happened during your lifetime here in Montgomery County or maybe in the city. Well, mostly uh, the disasters were from water because we've had several floods down in the River Plantation, uh, West Fork, I mean, area of uh, San Jacinto River. And, uh, and that's really where I think most of our tragedies have come since I, I was alive. Of course, back in the early years, uh, it's rumored that uh, half the town burned and, uh, and we had to- re but not in my lifetime, but there's, uh, but uh, that, that's about the worst that I know of is, is that. This next item is dear to your heart. Tell us about your home building business in Montgomery County during the home boom. During the home boom. Well, you know, uh, we always said that Conroe was going to boom one day. And I think it was going to take Houston to grow from the, from the south and the east and the west, and then finally it came north. And I think what helped inspire the growth of, of Conroe was the development of, uh, number one, I-45. Mm -hmm. Number two, the Woodlands was a great asset to the county and, and brought more people up to, to the north. Mm -hmm. The development of Lake Conroe for recreation uh, we now have uh, a great uh, uh, industrial park. We have a great technology park that we're beginning to break ground on now. Uh, we have uh, uh, an airport that uh, is uh, expanding to where we're going to be able to uh, maybe one day land some large jet planes and uh, so uh, with the with the recreation, with the schools as, as well as they are, we have a great school district. Uh, the recreation, the schools, the uh, great arts and theater groups that we have, uh, Conroe is just beginning to blossom in its own way. It sure, is. it sure is, isn't it? Do you have any funny stories you want to tell us about any of the politicians that uh, in your recollection you might have, sir? Well, you know, there's been some characters. Yes, I've heard. And, and uh, you know, I, I don't know if I could go to jail for some of this, <laughs> but, uh, you know, well, maybe, uh, you maybe I shouldn't, yeah, but, okay. but uh, you know, uh, there's some that, that are very, but in a loving way, mm -hmm. all of them were, were great people. Uh, and uh, and I have, they were dear friends of mine. and. Uh, uh, that, and I'll mention a few names. T.J. Peel was a great friend of mine, uh -huh. and uh, Bo Cathy was a great friend of mine. Bobby Yancey, who was a, was also uh, a J.P., became a commissioner, and, and uh, he did a, a great job. Some of the judges that we had, uh, uh, John Martin, mm -hmm. uh, the Coker family, mm -hmm. uh, were all in, in the politics uh, uh, back in that, my time here, and. Uh, and they all served us diligently, and, 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 and we're proud to have, I'm proud to have known them. Yes, nice guys. Can you tell us any other events that you wish future generations to know about? You know, I, I think I've mentioned most of them uh, in the fact that uh, uh, it's been an, such a privilege to have lived during this time of, of watching Conroe grow from 5,000 people to almost 60,000 people today. Uh, you know, there's, uh, there is, uh, when I first ran for council in the 70s, there was 10,000 people. And today, there's, there's I think, 57,000 people. So uh, we've seen a lot of growth, and, and we've had a lot of good uh, councils to, uh, to help to continue the, the growth of our infrastructures and, and, uh, in an orderly manner. We're a healthy city. We're, we're blessed to be where we are, in, not only just in Conroe, but in the state of Texas and in the United States of America, because this is really a, a, a blessed place today. Yes, we are. Do you have any other or more information that you want to share? Or? 
Well, you know, I, I was thinking the other day or about uh, coming here and talking a little bit, and, and uh, I was thinking about how we could ride our bicycles to town and we didn't have to worry, and we could ride anywhere in town we wanted as long as we were home by dark. You know, yes. and, and uh, sometimes that didn't happen right. But uh, we would go downtown in Conroe and, and uh, on Saturday morning and, and you'd have Warren Burger's uh, mercantile store there and you'd have the Capital Drug and the Carter Drug and, and, and uh, Brownlee's uh, Drug Store. And the, the pe men would be standing around on the streets talking about what it was happening in the main in the events of the world or in the events of uh, the city or the county right now and uh, and uh, you that's where they would would get their information and, and uh, but the only way we had to communicate back in those days were either on the radio or to go to the Crichton theater and see the news clips and uh, and see what uh, what was happening in the war mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, you know it, it just uh, amazes me to, to stop and think about the the old uh, restaurants that we used to go to, cafes, and when you walked in, you knew everybody, mm -hmm. and everybody knew you. Name a few. Well, you had uh, Dodge Cafe. Miss mm -hmm. Gerald had that, and that was over on South Fraser Street. Mm -hmm. You had uh, Hewitt's Cafe, yeah. which was Leo Hewitt's mother. I remember. Yeah, and then, of course, we had Mildred's Cafe on further out, which was Sue's, and that was my mother's. And uh, then uh, you had Shipley's, and uh, Shipley's was a big uh, uh, place to go and when I was a young man. And uh, you had the old BC Cafe downtown. You had Jimmy's Cafe downtown. Jimmy's, yeah. yeah. And uh, you had the Crichton Theater. You had the Liberty Theater downtown. And uh, so uh, there, uh, there was just uh, a lot of things. Down there. You know, back in those days, uh, we could go to the movie for nine cents. It was a little yeah. bit more when I went. It was like a quarter. Well, well if you wanted to stay for the matinee on Saturday, it cost you a quarter. That was it. Yeah, was and, it. and and but for me, you know, to get I didn't ever have a quarter, so uh, I barely had two nickels to rub together, and I had to uh, sell Coke bottles to get that. Oh, so, yeah. and so, uh, but uh, you know, you could go over to the Crichton Theater, and 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 they had good movies over there, but over in the Liberty Theater. Over there, they had the uh, uh, old westerns, you know, oh, Tom Mix, you know, Gene Autry, Lash the Rue, uh, you know, Roy Rogers, The Shadow. I bet oh, you don't right. remember The Shadow? Yeah. I do. I do. The Shadow. That was, uh, you know, who played The Shadow? I don't remember. John Wayne. John Wayne. Yeah. How, they were just starting out. That. Yes. Just starting out. And, and you know, uh, but. You know, when you start walking around the, the square in your memory, you know, on, over by the railroad track, you had uh, the Conroe Hotel, which became the McGee Hotel. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, there they served a family-style meal, one of the best lunches you've ever eaten, because it was, they'd just have a long table. And everybody would sit at that table, and they'd say, you know, there's fried chicken here and, chicken, and uh, whatever else here, and mashed potatoes and beans and mm -hmm. corn and all that. And, and they just bring bowls out, and people just passing it around. You know, they wouldn't, the health department would kill you today, <laughs> probably. I, I you imagine, know. yeah. But uh, yeah. They, they had the, that, had, uh, that was the old Conroe Hotel, and then you had the Charles Hotel, and then you had the, eventually the, the Conroe Hotel, which was the, the place when I was growing up to go. But uh, then uh, uh, we had the, po uh, the uh, uh, railroad depot. Mm -hmm was uh, on the on the crossroads of the of the uh, tracks mm -hmm. and and that's really what made Conroe Conroe originally started out a switch for uh, the railroad it was called the Conroe switch and and the county was big in in lumber mm -hmm. and uh, that's where they got their start until George Strake mm -hmm. struck oil out in the uh, the oil field there, and uh, then we had the big boom of the, the oil rigs, and uh, uh, something that some people may not know and, and all, but it was many, many years before we had a school tax, because George Strake paid the school tax he for did. everybody. I did not know. Yeah. Hmm. So, uh, 
uh, that's just something that, that I, someone had told me and I remembered that. And uh, So Conroe has been blessed. We've had uh, great mayors. We've had Bill Newton. We've had, uh, we've had uh, Bar uh, Carl Barton. You had uh, Mickey Dyson, uh, Carter Moore, Tommy Metcalf, Webb Melder. Uh, so uh, we've had uh, we've been blessed with a lot of lot of lot of yeah, good things in Conroe. Sure have. You know, uh, back o across from uh, the Crichton Theater, you had uh, Jimmy's Cafe there, and right. Jimmy Williams owned this, right. and he sold that to Jimmy Dinkins, and then uh, Jimmy Williams eventually went down to uh, Fraser Street and opened up another one another restaurant, which was just called Jimmy's Restaurant as well. And it was next to uh, uh, Flaxman's Grocery. And he was next to the mobile station that had the horse, the, the horse on it. And I believe y'all have that horse here. Right outside. And, uh, and uh, then, uh, but you know, for Conroe, it only had 5,000 citizens. Mr. Johnson had Blacksmith's Grocery that was next to Jimmy's originally. Then you had Barber's Market. Then you had Safeway. Mm -hmm. Then you had Blacksmith's Grocery on Main Street, mm -hmm. South Main, right. North, yeah, South Main. And you had Gibson's Restaurant, I mean, uh, oh, uh, uh, Grocery on 105 East. Now that's a lot of grocery stores for five, 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 five that's places. That's true. Yeah. That's true. And, and uh, originally, Warnburgers was the, the large grocery store. They had the grocery store on the right-hand side and the mercantile on the left-hand side. And, and my grandmother, we only got one pair of shoes a year. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother would take us three boys mm -hmm. up to Warnburgers and we'd buy some pair of tennis shoes. And they were kids, K-E-D-S. Mm -hmm. And they were black with white uh, sand, you know, on the bottom. And, and uh, so if you wore those out, you just had to go barefooted. But, uh, uh, you know, it was, uh, but then over on, uh, over on Simonton Street, they had uh, Everett's Hardware. But Everett's Hardware, I believe, and I might have to check this out, but I believe was uh, originally Madeley's Grocery or Meat Market over there on now, that street. Now, what was the barber shop? Was that that wasn't Booth? I mean, Booth Booth's barber shop was over on uh, right across from the Crichton Theater as well, okay. <clears throat> and uh, that uh, that's where I used to get my hair cut, and so. He cut my two children's hair the first time. I bet they don't even remember that. But uh, well, that's, that's uh, still a barber shop. That is, it's, yeah. Bobby uh, Bobby Shepherd got that now. And uh, but then the one over on the on on the Simonton Street side uh, was uh, I don't remember who had that. But that's where Bill Newton went to get his shave every morning. I remember that. He, he now, there was went. a place that you bought newspaper. And you got ice cream right before the barber shop, or right after the barber shop, and then there was Everett's. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. That little. It was like a hole in the wall. Yeah, and and that is where Siegelman's is today. Uh, yes. That's where Siegelman's is. It is. Uh huh. And, uh, but uh, along there, you remember. Uh, Gentry's Menwear mm -hmm. <clears throat> was on one side on the corner, mm -hmm. and then you had uh, uh, Brown. who? Brownlee. Yeah. On the other end. And you had Tally's on the other end, and you had Wilkins Cleaners. You had had a cleaners in there, or was it Conroe Cleaners? Conroe Cleaners. And upstairs they had the telephone, mm -hmm. which was Conroe Telephone, which is Lucky, I think, back then or Livingston or something. Well, yeah, well, <coughs> 48 years. Phone company and and yeah, but back in the old days, I you know, uh, well, they had operators, and you pick up the phone, and and I remember my phone number was one nine two. I never forget that phone number, 
And, and, but, but, you know, it really didn't matter because you could pick up the phone and you'd say, hello, and the operator would know your voice. Mm -hmm. And they'd say, Toby, who do, you, who do you want to call? And I'd say, I want to call Charles' house. Mm -hmm. Okay, just a minute. And they would, hang, they would connect you. They knew you that well. And uh, so the switchboard is sitting out here in the hall. Yeah, yeah, and and so you know the, the old switchboard, and I was seeing a program on television the other night about about that, about the switchboard, and how some of the uh, ladies in smaller towns, I guess, uh, had them in their bedroom, and they'd have to get up in the middle of the night and answer the phone, you know. But I don't yeah. know if they did that. In Montgomery. In Montgomery, they did. Bought the Montgomery phone company. The people who owned it was named Curry. And the switchboard was in a living room. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it, uh, it's amazing how far along things have come. And then it was, uh, then it back in came with the PL, which was Pleasant. Pleasant, I Pleasant, you know, yeah. Pleasant 6. Whatever, and yeah. Whatever, PL. And uh, nowadays, you, everybody's got one in their pocket. A telephone is in the pocket you can't get, get away from I know, anymore. I know, we had five people on our party line. Yeah. They hated me as a teenager. I, I bet you <laughs> did. I bet you did. But, you know, party lines went away, and, and uh, when I got my first mobile phone was in about 1972, and uh, it was actually a Princess phone hooked up to a Motorola system, and there was about 10 of us in town that had them, and it was worked off of a tower, and... Uh, uh, it was like the old days. You'd pick up the phone and it'd beat the operator on the other end and you'd tell her what number you wanted to call, Conroe or Houston. We had a line for Houston. And so, uh, but that was, you know, people, I'd drive down the road back in those days and people would look at me like I was crazy talking hey, on the yeah. phone, you know. Yeah. But, you know, of course today it's so common knowledge that everybody in the world's got one, even your, you know, five-year-old child's yeah, got one. True. So, uh, Tell me, you graduated in 61, and how many were in your class? I graduated in 59. 59. 1959. We had a little over 100 in our class. Uh, we, uh, but like I said, most of us grew up together. Uh, we, uh, we're, we're very close. Uh, we stay, stay close to it, each other. We want to know what's going on in each other's lives because... So that, that, that building was the Conroe High School on what street? It would have been on uh, San Jacinto. Uh, oh, you mean Sam Houston? The, Sam Houston, I went to Sam Houston Elementary School. Right. I went from Sam Houston Elementary School, right. I went to Hewlett and Anderson Elementary okay. School for my sixth grade. And then from there, I went to uh, William B. Travis, which was Seven and eight. on 3rd Street. Yeah. Across the track. Uh, and then I went to Crockett High School, which was across the tracks on the on the uh, west side, and, uh, and that was way before they built the one out here on. Uh, so that, that building when you were in school had no air conditioning. No air conditioning. Nobody had cars. No, you know, no. I don't. We all had that radiator heaters and uh, and had uh, uh, no air conditioning. When uh, we, we thought to see, he was going to sit by the window because yeah, you know yeah. we just had to have some air. And, uh, uh, you know, we went to play basketball in the gym and there's no, uh, no air conditioning and, yeah. and all that. And, and, you know, another thing, uh, I, of course, I was raised uh, over on 3rd Street and right across the street from junior high school, J.T. Montgomery was the principal. And, and uh, I think one of your interviewers is Robin Montgomery. Okay. And, and Robin and, uh, and I were close friends, grew up together. And during the winter time, when Christmas holidays came along, well, we would go by J.T. Montgomery's house and get a key to the school, and go in, and, and a lot bunch of us boys would go in and play basketball in the, in the gym. So you know, you try that today. <laughs> you know, it, yeah. uh, but uh, you have to know it, the password and the security. Oh <laughs> yeah, you know, and and you know we we didn't uh, they didn't think anything about letting us just roam. Yeah, you know, we of course we didn't roam the school. We just went in there and went to play basketball. Came out and closed it, uh, closed it back up, and gave them the key back. And, you know, but it's uh, it uh, Conroe is, is is I'm just privileged and honored to to have lived here, 
you know, and, and to have my children grow up here, and uh, now my grandchildren are growing up here, and uh, you know, this is what fifth, sixth generation, and and. Uh, uh, now you yeah. had two sons. I had two sons. Okay. Yes, and uh, then uh, uh, I have uh, a daughter mm -hmm. that uh, uh, graduated from Texas University of Texas, and. Uh, so she has two little girls, and so uh, they'll be starting to school. One of them will be starting preschool. Oh, so she, yes. yeah, she's big time now. Yes. You know, so, but uh, I tell you, you know, uh, this. I, not only have I had an opportunity to live here, I've had an opportunity to give back to the community by serving on council, not once but twice. You know, some people have said, you know, what would you do if you had it to do over again? Well, I'm one of those lucky ones that's got an opportunity to do it again. That's right. And, and I, hopefully I'm going to do a better job the second time. <laughs> so uh, I know that, that uh, you know, I've been, there again, I've been blessed with the citizens trusting me with the duty that they've given me. I hope that uh, I can continue to be with them and, and, and serve them as a, as, and make their life better. And so that's what we're all about here, I think. And, and our community has always been that way. Well, you started the downtown Christmas party, what do you call it, celebration. Right, right. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I first came back on council, uh, I, uh, I was watching a, a segment on television about uh, a town that uh, uh, didn't celebrate Christmas. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, it was about eight o'clock, and, and uh, I got up, and Vanessa asked me, she said, uh, where are you going? I said, I'm going to go downtown to see what we're celebrating, how we celebrate Christmas. And so as I went downtown, I, I had my windows down in the car, and I, I couldn't hear any sounds of Christmas. Downtown? Downtown. I couldn't. And we had uh, eight green wreaths with red lights on them. Eighty, I mean, eighty, 80. of them. Had eighty of them on the on the flag on the light pole. The the only problem was we had four hundred twenty one light poles. So I went back and and told her, told my, Vanessa, my mm -hmm. wife, about it, and she said, uh, "Well, isn't there anything that you can do about that?" I said, well, I don't know. I said, I'm going to take you down and show you. So the next night I took her down and I showed her. She said, you know, this is, you need to do something. So I sat down and, and drafted a letter to the council. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the first council meeting of the next year, I asked for an opportunity to uh, approach the council. Mm -hmm. And I <clears throat> read them my letter and I told them uh, that uh, what I'd seen, mm -hmm. what I'd heard, and that I felt it was time that we brought Christ back into Christmas. Mm -hmm. And I really think that everybody thought, not, first they were impressed that I would even think of this, I think, but they <laughs> thought I was sort of, yeah. you know, couldn't make this happen. Yeah. Well, because of the fact that I have a great council, and because of the fact that uh, we have great staff, mm -hmm. we've got great employees, they all joined in together and, and, and to support this. And, and the first year, we, we lit up every light pole, 421 light poles. Mm. And we wrapped lights on the rooftops of every building downtown. And we had a tree lighting ceremony in Heritage Park, and we had a uh, the next day, our Christmas parade, and uh, uh, we built a Christmas uh, Santa Claus village. We had uh, face painters, we had uh, jugglers, we had uh, sketch artists, we had uh, rock wall climbing, balloonists, you name it, we had My it. Goodness. And so it became, became what we have yeah. today. And, and the next year, which is, was last, not, yeah, last year, mm -hmm. we added music to downtown and uh, and so when you when you stepped out of your car downtown 
you would hear Christmas music, no matter where you were in, around the square, you would hear Christmas music. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if you dialed your FM radio to 88.9, you could hear the Christmas music as well. Of course, as I say, it keeps growing every year. Wow. And it I keeps know you've done it. And we built a trail of lights. Yes, you And did. we moved our Christmas tree from the Heritage Park down to the corner of uh, Davis Street mm -hmm. and Fraser, where anybody pulling into Conroe will see the Christmas tree first thing, and they can hear the music. They can get out and walk the trail of lights. It is beautiful. And this year, hopefully, if we're talking to the Lone Star College, which has just opened up in, in uh, the uh, uh, industrial park, which is a blessing to Conroe as well, mm -hmm. helps our, our young citizens to further their education. Mm -hmm. But they have a program of uh, uh, visual uh, choreography of music and, mm -hmm. and lights. And so they have joined in for our Christmas festivities. And where we have our lights in, in, uh, over in Heritage Park, mm -hmm. Uh, hopefully we're going to have all the lights where they are, uh, they, they dance to the music. And kind of a laser type? It, it, no, it, no, it's actual lights. Oh, okay. <coughs> it's actual lights and, and uh, we'll have uh, lights that, that go over arches, we'll have lights on trees yes. that'll come on yes. and we'll have, uh, a, a, you know, there'll be this section will come on and this one will come on and this one will come on and it'll just be uh, something very beautiful, and it, 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 we'll have it where it comes on at six o'clock at night, and it'll go off and and uh, at ten o'clock. But it'll have maybe five songs wow. at a time, and then it'll start over again. And, Choreographed, and this, yeah. Yeah, and 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 this program will last from the day after Thanksgiving until January the fifth or sixth, something like that. So uh, we'll have the music, we'll have the, the light show, we'll have, uh, uh, it's, it's really gotten really large. And, and we've been blessed with a lot of, a lot of great sponsors. The city mm -hmm. themselves don't, does not pay that much for that. We have, we have sponsors from uh, the, the community, mm -hmm. such as uh, the car dealers. Uh, we have, uh, uh, the Wasanger Water Well, you know, uh, mm -hmm. Bucklew Chevrolet, Wasang uh, Wiesner, uh, mm -hmm. Buick Pontiac, uh, Streeter Smith, uh, you know, all of these people come together <coughs> to to make this a gift to the citizens of Congo. Wow, what a great opportunity! Very touching, very touching, because I get a little ch choked up about it, but. <laughs> But well, I you've done a tremendous job, tremendous on well, that. I, if, uh, if I just hope that, uh, and I, I've always said that I want to set this up where they don't depend on me for this, mm -hmm. that, that uh, eventually the Parks Department will take this over, and, and they're gradually working into that, uh, especially for the uh, uh, Christmas Celebration Day. And, but I, I want them to eventually take over the entire uh, program the event, so that it yeah. can live on. Great, mm -hmm. great. So I, I appreciate this, and, and I really appreciate uh, everything that, uh, that y'all are doing over here to keep uh, the heritage of, uh, of our great community, yeah. Yeah, and that's uh, the entire community, the county as well. And, and uh, if there's anything that... Uh, that we can do to help serve y'all. Our doors are always open. Thank you, Toby. And we've enjoyed hearing about your history.